I'm back. I apologize for my absence, but these last four months have been hell on earth. Let me tell you, I see why people leave the bedside. I absolutely understand why they leave the bedside or they leave nursing as a whole. These last four months have been hell on earth for me as um, basically a new graduate LPN. So before I start this video, if you are a new graduate or you're about to be a student and you feel like that you get discouraged easily, uh, you should just exit this video. You know, this this is just definitely not for the week. And this, honestly, I don't think people are being truthful about what's going on now in the healthcare field as a whole. Um, and this is just gets down to the nitty gritty of my experience, but I'm sure this is not, you know, I'm sure this isn't, you know, new for anybody else. So, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, the last time I told y'all that I went to, I'm, I'm going to lay my notes too as well. The last time I told y'all that I went from a long-term care facility, a SNF unit, and that I eventually left, like I think it was like six or seven months ago. I left in August and I got another job offer. But let me tell you why I quit. I quit because I had to do constant write-ups. Constant, constant write-ups on my CNAs and my CMAs for not doing a job. My first write-up was on a CMA because she was passing her medicine to a CNA to give to another resident. The CNA was scared. She gave me the medicine. She was like, she keeps trying to give me this medicine to give to the resident in the, while they passing lunch and stuff like that. And I'm like, girl, give me that medicine. So I took the CMA to the side where nobody was around, and I told her, I said, hey, you know the rules and regulations of the state. You can't be giving the medicine to the CNA to be given to a resident. And you up under my license. Stop stop playing. Stop playing, sis. You know not to do that. And this was a grown woman. You know not to do that. Anybody that's watching this video, pass your own medication. Pass your own medication. Give it to the resident and make sure they swallow it. Not, not another tongue or nothing like that. Make sure they swallow it. Okay? I was having issues with that. So this lady, she despised me. She despised me. She stalked me, did all types of stuff to get me in trouble just because I called her out on that. She's like, ooh, you're gonna write me to the board or anything like that. That is not up to me. That is up to your managers, the front desk workers and stuff like that. That's not up to me. But all I need to do is just report it because you're playing those games. Another write-up that I had to do was on two CNAs, grown women. I told them, I said, hey, I need you to go check on these COVID patients every two hours while I go do my med pass. This had this particular resident who had like a left BKA. All she needed to do was make sure she got her food, brush her teeth, put her in bed, get her out of bed. Whatever it is that this lady needs, just get it because she's alert and ornate. She's all the way there. After they pass the lunch table to this lady, she, uh, they leave her there. And I'm talking about probably I think a couple of hours, you know? And I'm doing the whole haul at this point. I'm doing all my assessments, the incoming, the outgoing patients. All she had to do was just basically check on this resident. So all I hear is, help, help, help. I have my mask on, I run in there, the lady is hanging off the freaking, uh, the desk that she was on while she was eating her lunch. And the lady's been calling, well actually she wasn't been calling, she told these two CNAs, she was like, hey at this time, how about y'all put me in bed because I have this leg pain. You know you have that leg pain once you get your foot cut off, it's not your foot, your leg cut off. And she was like, I need to be in bed. So she's sliding off at the edge and she's crying. I am about to cry with this lady because she she's no problem. No problem whatsoever. And I'm like, y'all, I told y'all this. Like, just check, just check up on this lady. Now you're going to have to make me write y'all up because I told y'all just to do something so simple. And you doing, you on your phone in the kitchen talking to the other workers. Or you on your phone on the hallway and stuff like that. And I'm a cool nurse. I don't care what you do. You could go watch TV, you could be on your phone, but just get your work done. I'm that cool nurse. I'm not about to get the chitter chatter. We already have a hard job as it is. I'm not about to be like, get off your phone. You don't need to be doing this. You know, that's not me, that's not me. All right, so those two girls, they didn't like me either. And they actually were in my face. They were arguing with me about this, our write up. And I thought they were about to jump me. I'm like, okay, all right, shit. They thought they was about to jump me like, sis, why are you getting mad? Because I told you, and this is numerous times, I told these two women to please just do this simple thing so I don't have to go do it myself. Remind you, if I have 14, sometimes even up to 21 by myself or somebody calls in, I would expect for you to just do something simple because it's just me. 
that's my license. Why are you not understanding? And so they they really argued me down about this write up. They snatched the paper that I typed up of the incident that happened because I typed the whole incident of what they did wrong, how they need to do better, and gave it to the front, uh, the supervisor in the front. And she was like, oh, no, they're not supposed to be doing that. She pulled out the pamphlet. She said, oh, this pamphlet here, this 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 is what says in the pamphlet what you're supposed to do as a CNA or a CMA. You did right. You did good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So they got mad because they had to get a write up. So I just stopped talking to them. All I asked for them in the end was to please just do your job. That's all I care about. Just do your job. You don't have to like me. You can hate my guts. But come on, sis, just do your job so we can all get this check at the end of the day, okay? So in the end, um, I was getting more COVID patients and there was a lot of errors in the computer as far as like other people not checking off their like assessments or if we had a lot of instant reports because some of these residents, they was falling, falling, falling. But remind you, you can't watch every and everybody, especially if you want them in their room since it's uh, COVID precautions and everything like that. So some of these people was falling and they was getting mad at me because of certain things that I was putting in the computer. I'm telling, listen, what I've learned, although they have not teach this in school, I know the laws and stuff like that. You know, I ain't trying to get sent to no board. I'm trying to obey HIPAA laws, all types of stuff. I'm putting the 411, hey, we didn't have this. I didn't have that. The resident was in this room. I was told to do this or that. You know, I'm putting everybody's name down in notes. And they was getting mad at it. They was getting mad like, you don't have to put that much in there. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. So I was getting in trouble of stupid stuff like that. Oh, why you didn't put this order in from the doctor? This, this, and I'm like, well, that's not my job if it's not my patient, okay? Just because your previous nurse didn't do her job that night when she got the order doesn't mean you should be blaming that on me, okay? I'm not the one that signed that off. My signature is not right by that. I was getting in trouble because other nurses, the shift before me, wasn't cross-checking their work and they wasn't giving it to me in report. So I gotta find out through the notes and stuff like that, trying to figure out why this patient ain't got a medicine or why they ain't got this certain type of cream. I'm sitting here ordering pharmacy stuff. I'm talking on the phone with the family. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed because I have all these patients to deal with and I'm doing goddamn administrative, administrative work. I'm annoyed, I'm tired, burnt out. So I end up taking another job on a long-term care, long-term acute care uh, center, which is the LTAC. Y'all can go look that up. These are people who were once in a hospital, um, but they need basically extended care and they're more acute. They're not like your residents at a SNF for long-term care. And I was excited about this job because I can beef up my skills, you know? So I took that job. Uh, she told me she was like the nurse to patient ratio was like one to four or one to five. And she was like that, uh, the money was top notch and she didn't lie. The money was top notch at this place. It was an actual hospital. And I told myself, I said, Hey, if I'm going to deal with some BS, how about I go work in the hood? And I was so serious. I was like, yo, how about I just go work in the hood where they, you know, it's government assistance, you know, they paying top notch in the hood. They're not paying really at these private places, places that got all the electronics and stuff like that. It's all clean everywhere. You know, they, you know, I was like, damn, I'm just gonna work in the hood. And that's exactly what I did. It was a hospital. It was like a small community-based hospital, LTAC unit. Um, um, it was paper charting, so that was hard to convert to electric to paper. Uh, I, eventually I got used to it, but, and then uh, they also had my schedule where I worked three days, one week, and then I worked four days the next. So it was like rotating weekends, which I was fine with. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just sitting in the house majority of the time. Um, so I get my first day, I get there. It's about 24 to 24 to 30 beds. So in a circle, you have these people who are acute care, but they're not like really on vents, tracks. Uh, some of our tellies and stuff like that drips. Uh, we gotta do a lot of lab work on them. We got wound care. I mean, I, these are the worst patients I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God, in my life. 
And first it was nerve wracking, nerve wracking, but you know, I said, let me just put myself out there. This will be great for my resume. And that's just what I did. So when I got there, I was so happy because this is the all black crew. We're talking about the nurses, everything was black. There was probably a few demographic of people, a few Latino, a few white or something like that, but it was all black. My charge nurses were all black and I was just happy to have my people. You know, my people was in there. So um, they really trained me pretty well. So we had like uh, the other patients, they were LTAG, and then we had an overflow ICU. So those were the heavy hitters. It was about like mm, eight beds, and that's the majority where we started putting COVID patients. But mind you, when I first took this job at the interview, she was like, oh, we don't take any COVID patients. If we do, they get sent out. If they test positive here. I was like, okay, that's cool. They pay me top notch and it ain't even COVID in here. Eventually, it became COVID. And so they started putting them in these insulated rooms, like where you shut them and everything like that. And majority of these people, they had to end up getting hooked up to vents, tracks. They can't talk. I mean, it was really bad. Like the stuff that they say about the whole corona thing when it comes to the elderly population, it was bad for them. It was really bad for them, you know? Um, so I ended up learning about getting IV trained, the PIXA system, doing my labs. I've even dropped tubes on my own. Um, and again, I did the wound care. Um, let me see what else. Then eventually once I got trained and they put me out by myself, actually, let me tell you before they tried to make me do three days of training. And then it wasn't until my charge RN, we about the same age. She's an RN. She like probably a few years older than me. And she was like, she messaged him. She was like, no, you don't give her three days. Give her two weeks. It was, it was, it was for her to stand up for me, you know, as a black woman. She was like, no, give her two weeks because this is a hard floor. Why y'all not being honest about that? You don't just throw no new grad on the floor like that. And so, stuck up for me. We did uh, two weeks of training, and then, then I was good. I, I Listen, they didn't have to tell me not a dang thing, okay? Another was that I started seeing slowly. I was like, where's the aides? She was like, oh, we only got one aide. I said, all these patients and one aide. So, I we had to share this aide <laughs> and do our turns. Sometimes I had to clean people by myself. And then I started to notice that we were becoming more short and more short staff. I said, well, we only got this one A that'll work. She can only work like three days a week or four days a week. And now I come in and we don't have an A at all. And I'm like, I have five patients. I need an aid. Where is it? Oh, she called in. So there was nights where I had to work by myself. I had to do my turns. I had to do my medication administrations. I had to do my wound care. All of that by myself. So at first I was like, okay, you know, a day, that's nothing. I can do this by myself. Okay, that's, that's fine, because my checks, my checks was, okay, ball in. Baby, I was shopping every weekend. You couldn't tell me nothing. So I was like, let me let me deal with it. Cause this check. Whew. So then I noticed again and again that it started happening. I said, where is this? Hey, where is where's the A's? Why y'all not hiring people? Do you need help or something? Because this is hard. And especially on lab nights. This, if you worked on the LTAC, I don't know. I'm starting to think it's a pattern with LTACs. We had lab nights on Wednesdays and Sunday nights. I mean, CBC, BMP. I mean, all types of stuff. And then, and then if you had to go get COVID tests at that, like, and then the thing is with some of these IVs, you know, some of these IVs don't even draw because people don't flush them every day. So I had to do a whole bunch of sticks, stick after stick after stick. Then you got a patient that's crying, boohoo crying because they don't like to be sticked or you can't stick them at all because they don't have any veins. So that's just frustrating because you got to do medicine at this time. Then you got to do another medicine at this time. Then you got to do the wound care at this time. Then you have to do charting. Now, remind you, the charting is not electronic. So you can't just click, 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 click. It's all paper. And it's not even no one or two pages. It was about four pages front and back that I had to do because all of these are high observation patients. These are not no regular, regular patients. And so I'm like, I'm exhausted at this point. 
I did this for weeks and weeks and weeks and I was just sick and tired. When I did have a CNA, I noticed my CNA was a little bit ghetto, you know, and she would, while I'm doing my wound care, I noticed she would tell me what to do on my wound care. I'm like, girl, are you the one that's looking at these orders? No disrespect. I used to be an A. I used to be an MA. I know how it is, but I respected my boundaries. I stayed within my scope of practice. Homegirl, she, every time I was with this A, she would always step over her boundaries. You know, like she would step over it. Like, girl, that, 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 don't don't be worried about what I'm doing. As long as I'm not hurting nobody, you know, or anything like that, don't don't worry about it. This you haven't read the order that I've read from the doctor, sis. Smile you and yours. This day she will always try to tell me what to do. Oh, I think you should give him this medicine. Excuse you. When I was an A, you couldn't you couldn't even t have me do any of that because you don't pay me to do that. This girl do, 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 to every other nurse. I wasn't the only one. She would just do this to every other nurse. She would get into it with every other nurse. And then when I came in, oh, she started with me. And I just noticed, I said, damn, some miserable old B-I-T-C-H's. These are some miserable old, what the hell is going on? So I mind my business. I shut up because, again, that check was looking lovely, okay? All right, to go in, let's see. Every time I asked this CNA to help me do my turn, she would roll her eyes at me all the time. She would huff and puff. So it got to a point where I just stopped asking my CNA for help. I just stopped asking my own CNA for help. Isn't that ridiculous? And then I met another girl that was just an LPN as me. Um, this girl in particular... Remind you, I am not that very talkative. I just want to go in, do my job, and leave. I've made friends with all the black girls. They love coming to me, talking to me. I mean, we talk about boys and everything. When, when I work and stuff, it's, it's fun, you know? Like, we be on our phones. We be having fun. We be uh, asking each other for help. Like, the one thing about me and the other black women there, they helped, you know? Other nurses help each other. And I could not say that for the other demographic of women, and specifically this one woman that had it out for me. So let me tell you, there was this woman, um, once I became good friends with all the black girls, she felt like that I was taking these women from her. Like, she was like, okay, well, how come DeShayla is not talking to me when y'all always go talk to DeShayla all the time? Like, is she saying anything about me? Like, this girl was really delusional. I never talked to this girl. The most she got out of me was, hey, can you, uh, when I did like a narc, like some morphine or something like that, hey, can you check off for me? Cause you gotta have two nurse checks and stuff like that. Okay, cool, she'll come in. All right, all right, shit. <laughs> like she would do it all. Okay, like, oh my goodness, the cattiness of this nurse. And to remind you, we're not even on the same floor. She would work in the overflow ICU and I would work the, the out of the unit there like you know you're dealing with the head heavy 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 hitter patients and you out here worried about me so it got to the point where she would talk about me to other nurses every time she would come into work oh you gonna go over there with the shayla you gonna talk to her i just can't stand her did you know what she did the other day i promise you not i have, remember how i said that i've been working by myself and this is not even one to four patient ratio. It's not even one to five no more. It's one to six. And I'm getting irritated because six is pushing it as a nurse. That is pushing it. Especially when these ain't your regular long-term care sniff people. Six was breaking me down. There was times I would go to the bathroom and I would just... Because my feet is killing me at this point. I can't can't see me break down they can't be see me be me uh all extra like a week be you know so my patience was taken care of everybody was clean my meds was passed my charting was done i turned off the lights on my side of the unit because everybody was asleep clock out i put my head on the desk right close my eyes i am tired my back is hurt my feet everything hurts so somebody tells me that oh this one girl She's, um, she's taking pictures of me while I have my head down at my desk. 
She go tells my charge. My charge comes in. She's like, hey, let me go talk to you. Let me talk to you in the other room. I'm like, okay, cool. What's going on? She was like, hey, uh, old girl. Mind you, she's white. She's, only, she's probably like one of, one of the three white people that's there. Actually, the only one white person. And she's like, hey, she showed me these pictures of you with your head down on the desk. She was like, now, I don't like all that messy stuff because that used to happen to me. Remind you, this lady is an RN. She's actually a doctor of nurse practice. And she said, hey, I don't like when people do that messy stuff because we already know that this place is heavily short-staffed. They're not giving you the adequate uh, stuff to work with. Uh, you know, we don't even have wipes, y'all. We don't have wipes. We using that regular old nasty rag to clean people up. So imagine doing all this work in your labs and meds, and I can't even lay my head down at my own desk because I can't even leave the hall because I don't have anybody to cover me. She was like, I don't like when people do that type of stuff, but if you don't see me busy, how about you just tell me that you need me to cover your hall and you go down to this basement. She was like, why don't you just go back to the basement, go take you a nap, and then take a break, come back in here, you know, and I'll help you out so you can get some rest because we all know, you know, we're doing the best that we can here with nobody here. And I'm, she was like, you know, just to cover your your butt, you know. And I was like, cool, thank you so much, you know. But I was I was just really tired. You know, I couldn't help it. I was looking out for my own lights and stuff like that. But I am exhausted. I had, to, I had to put my head down. And I was already clocked out. I couldn't leave. She was like, yeah, she's been taking pictures of you. And so she... <laughs> goes and shows these pictures to all the other nurses. Now, remind you, these are black nurses. Are you trying to turn these other people away from me? They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. I didn't do anything to anybody. So, literally, she was showing these pictures. She was like, yeah, she's sleeping and stuff like that. Yeah, she's going to get fired. She's going to get fired. White lady, a white, old oh, grown lady. You got children at home. She goes to the CEO on me. The CEO doesn't do anything. I never go to the office about this. Nothing. They're not going to fire me. I was there on my hall. I was doing my job. I was even clocked out. And so I never even confronted her <laughs> on this. I just keep my mouth shut because I know how you are. You know where I'm going with this? I just know how you are. Those Karens, yes, I know how you are. So I'm just going to shut up till I can't no more. Because obviously what you're trying to do to me isn't working. I'm doing my job. My charge on her, and she, she, she knows I'm doing my job. She says I'm the best goddamn nurse there is. My other damn nurses say, I mean, my other damn patients are saying that I'm the best nurse that there is. I do my job. They know I, I don't be chitter-chatting. I don't be gossiping or anything like that. And so it got to a point where two other nurses that I uh, work with occasionally, they was like, oh, old girl, she's talking about you again. And I'm like, why is she talking about me? I don't even talk about her. Look, it, it was it was becoming obsession. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this girl on? Is she watching me when I leave or something like that? It was just weird. She was making up stuff about me. And it got, got to a point where two other nurses had a sticker for me. And they was like, what's your problem? What's your problem? Why do you keep talking about her? Well, I mean, she just doesn't talk to me. You know, she's rude. All she all she asks is like, can you do a check off with me and stuff like that? She never talks to me when I try to talk to her and stuff like that. But for what? Why does that bother you? You're working. Why does that bother you? You know? And then she does it again to another charge. And now my other charge, now she a little bit, you know, she a little bit heavy hitter than me. She's gonna tell you about yourself. So she was like, hey, why you why you talking about me? You know, what's the problem here? And the girl, she just couldn't say anything. You had all the words for about me. You do it again to somebody else. But now you don't have the words. You know, and I don't know, maybe she think I'm some chump, some weak thing because I don't talk. But I got something for you. I got something for you. So I just stopped talking to the girl. I leave it alone. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I just wanted my check and I wanted to go. This place was so bad, I had the worst type of wound care to do here altogether. I would go home. Actually, I wouldn't even go home. I would go do my groceries. I would go to Sprouts. Go to the parking lot. And I would sleep in the parking lot. 
I would forget I had to go get some groceries. I would sleep there for an hour. Then I would wake up, realize my car is still on, go do my groceries, drive back home, hit the parking lot of my house. Then I would sleep again in the car. Now I'm realizing that I'm sleep deprived. I'm not thinking straight anymore. I will drive on the highway. My I'm swerving my car on the highway because I'm doing nights, y'all. I don't never work days again. Like I will sacrifice my days to work nights just to not deal with doctors, you know, family and whatnot. Um, <laughs> I'm just tired of it all. So here I am. I'm working short staff. I'm dealing with other coworkers who are a different demographic than me that have it out for me for no freaking reason. Just the most stupidest thing in the world. And then I'm sleep deprived, overworked. I'm complaining about it, but I'm not getting any feedback. They don't care. They don't even care to send agency here. And I was just like, you know what? I just, I can't do this anymore. Job or no job, I just cannot do this anymore. Um, let's see. So eventually, when it was in November, um, my breaking point was a specific patient. And this patient, um, let's just say, it was a quiet quad. And the whole family, they would be in there and they wanted their medication at a specific time. Not at the time that the doctor ordered, at their time. And they made, they even called a doctor and tell them that they were adamant on it. Yeah, I need this, I need this. And the doctor would be like, what the fuck? And so I would get there, I would do my rounds. I would do my rounds. And I didn't give him his specific, I don't know what it was that he wanted me to get him. Um, his, it was like a three rounds of medication that he wanted me to give him around 11 o'clock. And I came in there around 11.30. Then people was pissed. Pissed. Because I didn't get there at 11.30. This, I'm talking about this medication was not urgent, nothing like that. Pissed. Ready to call the family, call the mama. The mama want to talk to me. First of all, I almost clicked the lady because you're not my patient. You're not my patient. You know, this patient took up to a van. Trach, peg tube, you got thousands of medication. And you get mad because I came 30 minutes late. And it's within my window. It's within my before and after window. And these people, I was like, you know what? I'm dealing with so much right now. Then I got to deal with family on top of that. Patient, get mad at me and stuff like that. Like, because you're so needy. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why would I want to be in this type of profession like this where they don't even give me all the things that I need? Plus, I got to deal with the irate patients. Then I got to deal with the damn irate families who don't even understand this job as a whole. Telling me what to do. How the administrator to get goddamn meds. Like, <laughs> I'm sick of it all. I'm sick of it all. The doctors, some, sometimes the doctors want to get, get mad at you because a certain order is not done. Because, again, like I said, it happens again. A previous nurse didn't put a previous order in that the doctor told him. Now they blaming it on me because it wasn't done, but it was never told to me. And I'm like, why do I got to deal with why, why am I dealing with this? I don't, I don't have to deal with this. It got to a point where I was looking for nine to five jobs elsewhere. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe a Monday through Friday isn't that bad. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I'm tripping. And so, y'all, y'all, I was done. I was done with this lifestyle. Um, I eventually put in a one-day notice. I think it was the week of Christmas, not Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving. And I said, you know what, I'm done. Thank you for all the skill sets that you've given me and stuff like that. Um, but I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I was I was done. I, I kept that little uh, information like confidential, but I was at my waist end. I was shaking. I had anxiety. Um, you know, I wasn't eating well. None of it. My health, everything was just fucked up. Every day I went to work, I was pissed that I was a nurse. I was pissed that I, sh I did this profession because no, there's no unity whatsoever. There's no unity, you know? And 
it wasn't until I started working with a few black nurses and them trying to like, you know, stick up for me is where it was like a little ounce of hope. And you can call it a race thing or whatever, but it's true. It, it happens in here. And I had to do what a regular old black person had to do, was just fucking ignore it, you know, just fucking ignore it. So um, I put in my one day notice, the front desk uh, supervisor, whatever her name is, she uh, called me while I was on my way to work. I was like, I'm going to sleep. I ain't worried about it. I don't feel like working for a while now. And she was like, hey, um, I know you put your one day notice in, but can you just please tell me why? Just why? Like, she was panicking. Like, everybody was quitting. Everybody was quitting. You know, everybody was quitting. She wasn't having nobody. She was like, uh, she's like, I'm about to break down. Can you just tell me why? I told her the whole nine. The whole nine. And I told her what they could change as a hospital. That job would have been legit. You know, that would have been a good job if they did everything right made sure the staff was in line, made sure the families was in line and shit like that. And, you know, did away with paper charting at that. You know, that made my job 10 times harder. And I told her about my situation, about that weird stalker girl. And, you know, I told her I was just fed up. And she was like, I'm just so sorry. And I just wish you would have came to me sooner so I could have prevented it. But <laughs> I knew you wouldn't prevent it because you don't have anybody to come in. Like, when they say there's a nurse shortage, it's a nurse shortage. Like, they're not lying about that. Like, it's hard to get people here. They're either retiring or they don't want to work in COVID floors and stuff like that. You know, there's not a lot of people coming in and out. <clears throat> so she was just, I was just done. I was just done with it. And she was like, thank you for giving me the information. I passed it along. She was like, the job opportunity is still here if you want it. You know, you can come back. I'm sorry, it'll get better. I'll get you more A's and stuff like that. But by then, it wasn't until mentally how fucked up I was where I was just like, I'll never come back. But thank you for this job opportunity. Like, I've learned so much. I told her, I said, I've learned so much. IVs, uh, meds, everything, tools. Like, I've learned this here because everything was boom, 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 boom. You know? Uh, blood administration, drips, like, RNs. They were, although we did it together, you know, laws, stuff like that. I've learned so much here. And I said, I thank you for that. But I won't be coming back. I won't be coming back. This job set the tone for me for nursing as a whole. Like, I just realized that this was not for me. Like, it, it wasn't for me. Like, I said, why did, why did I even do this? Why is it worth for me to get an RN if I know this is just how this is going to be? And you, you, you'll probably say, like, oh, this isn't, this isn't everywhere else. Yes, it is. It is. You have those caddy nurses. You, it's short staff everywhere you go. It is. It's everywhere, and it's the it's. You're just telling us just to deal with it, when you could. There's a possibility to change it, and it wasn't until this other girl she told me she was like, you know, we had this conversation. I'm having this conversation with other RNs, the DMP, uh, the LPNs, and we all agreed that we hated being a nurse. I, we hated being a nurse, but we knew it provided us with a different lifestyle than it was a couple of years ago. That's it. That's all, we, that's all good we can say about being a nurse. We don't lie to other people, other trainees. The job is hard. It's fucking hard. And I was just so fed up. And so I left. I was good, went to sleep, and then I got to enjoy Thanksgiving. Eventually my other friends left as well. Uh, you know, another RN of mine, she got accepted a, a AK job a week as an RN. My other LPN friend, she did uh, some agency and some uh, LPN work. And then I moved on to another job that I have to tell y'all in another video. Um, but like I said, I'm still on the fence about this whole nursing thing. Um, like I said, um, I kind of lost myself as a whole physically and mentally. And um, this job set the tone for that, set the tone for that. Um, so I just wanted to come and tell you that, um, you know, I don't know if I wanna move forward with my RN because of this. Do I really wanna deal with this and deal with other people? Like, whatever they tell you in the school, it's nothing like it. Of course I knew that, but it's not till you're eventually, you're in it, you're on that floor, you're doing it. I can't tell you how many times where I had cardiac arrest and it was the most <laughs> tragic stuff. I've dealt with deaths. 
dealing with death after death after death, and then when the funeral home comes to take them, another person's in that room. It don't even take a few hours. Another person is in that room. And it's like, damn, people can't even mourn no more. Everybody's just a, a freaking number, you know? And it's just, do I really want to be a part of this? Like, and another girl, she had to tell me, like, healthcare, the health industry as a whole, went down when they made everything for profit. When they made everything for profit and everything started becoming a sale, a sales pitch, and you making it seem like the patient is always right when you know that's not always the case. It's not always the case. The patient is not always right. Sometimes they're, they're clearly wrong. Their family could be very much so wrong. I understand that there's some nurses out there that don't be doing their job. Me, I do my damn job and I do it well. But uh, from, from experience, they don't, they don't know everything, okay? So when you say that this patient is always right, everything is for sale, and you don't do something as simple as giving nurses the adequate supplies, the adequate staffing, we, come, we become less on the totem pole, our license becomes in jeopardy, Everywhere we freaking go, it, it just doesn't seem worth it. It doesn't seem worth it anymore. And so I have to end this video with at worth, what worth is the money if it costs you your sanity? At, worth, at what worth is it? You know, like, that's all I can say about this profession right now. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. That's it. <laughs>